May 14, 1968, Panorama City, California. Later this evening, a milestone in the Spur Mount system has been achieved. Uh, earlier, for the first time, a clock drive has been successfully driving the sphere and is currently uh, following the uh, the double double in Lyra. Uh, this is using the suction cup principle, which uh, seemed always seemed to have certain uh, possibilities. I thought I would uh, then remove altogether the annular foam band, which I suspected could be done. I was sort of hesitant in trying it because once having done this, it would be uh, impossible for several days to make a repair on this unit. But I did pull out the annular band and once again tried the sphere. And I was I was quite surprised at first putting it in place without really locking it on, that the sphere uh, just lightly supporting against the suction cup was still quite steady. And uh, normally in looking through it, you could not tell the difference between the annular band being there and not being there. However, observing a little bit more closely, uh, you could see that with slight breezes, slight winds, that the images did have a tendency to move very slowly and very low frequency, which of course would be unsatisfactory from a photographic standpoint. However, uh, visually this still was uh, was quite acceptable. Uh, then I tried again pushing the sphere onto the suction cup and driving the water out from it. Uh, as yet I don't have the, uh, the uh, automatic system for pumping out the suction cup. But once I was locked on again and then I uh, ref refilled the reservoir so with a sufficient quantity of water to take the load off of the sphere so it would not be writing any high points and uh, tried setting it on Jupiter. Now I had quite a bit more difficulty this time adjusting it because it, the sphere had a certain amount of lateral freedom and uh, had a great deal of, of backlash. In fact, I found right away a certain spring constant of some kind where I was actually able to move the the tube over several degrees and the thing would very slowly come back to its center. So it seemed that uh, with this backlash or this uh, very soft springiness, this is where my trouble was previously, that the foam band apparently had sufficient drag to let the uh, the shaft somewhere or other just wind up. Now it could be in the coupling or it could be in the uh, the small nut. At first I thought it was in the uh, elasticity of the suction cup, but I kind of doubt that because there's so, so much of a present I do want to look into this from a hardware standpoint and see if I can improve on it. But at any rate, uh, once I did have Jupiter set in place, uh, it became immediately apparent that the system uh, was in fact uh, tracking uh, slightly irregular regularly at, at, at moments. I could see a slight jerkiness uh, from somewhere there. It very likely could be in the shaft assembly or it could be a very light uh, touch point in the sphere basin somewhere that something is dragging and until the light force of the drive system is sufficient to move it. And of course this is very light forces. Now it was driving uh, quite well and uh, oh, incidentally uh, it wasn't really until I, I put the uh, sphere onto um, the star Arcturus which was far enough off the equatorial zone that I was able to get the suction cup onto a good solid part of the sphere. And I did not have the leak problems that I had previously. It was at this, at this point that the stars uh, stayed absolutely perfectly in, in place. Maybe very occasionally a small breeze would come up and would cause it to shift very slightly or there'd be a slight uh, hitch or a, a jerk in the drive motion itself. But the star did stay, it did track, and this is the uh, first, uh, to my knowledge, successful driving of a uh, sphere system without monkey motion, all kinds of precision assemblies. And this, by no means, is a precision setup. Um, I have since then uh, put it on the double double in uh, Epson Lyra, and uh, Oh, incidentally, the original setup was not carefully lined up with the polar axis. And after a period of time, there was a drift apparent where the thing would do a drift off the field. And also uh, a general leakage, which I've always had with this uh, basin. 
uh, water level will drop and this would uh, cause an angular error in the aiming point. Uh, so there were these compound errors, but once, uh, say, coming back after an uh, interval of 20 minutes to half an hour and uh, topping up again with water uh, would would bring the star back. It's still in the finder, but slightly out of the field of the uh, main telescope, and this again was due strictly to the, uh, the polar angular error. Uh, I have just more recently, well, as I mentioned, put on Epson Lyra, which is a little closer to the pole, in over half hour or so, the uh, the images, the stars are still in the field. Uh, I do notice a little more of the uh, jerkiness, though, which I suspect is uh, probably a slight mismatch of the spheres, the primary sphere and the basin. There probably are touch points causing uh, causing this. It, it is quite reassuring that this thing, I think, definitely will work. There is a softness and elasticity which must be uh, removed. I suspect this probably can be done uh, by going to a, a better drive system, more rigid drive system, and coming up with a more solid coupling, maybe not such an elastic member, maybe just a, uh, a, a dish or a sleeve with a, essentially an O-ring or a very rigid uh, disc with a, a slight um, metal bellows uh, to affect a positive seal. Uh, this does give me some more confidence, however, into going back into the, uh, possibly trying the negator system again. Maybe there was something, some other reason why that one didn't work. And also, of course, going to the, uh, the belt drive system. I think it is important to have a working drive on it. And whether it's the, uh, the suction cup drive, which is the, basically the simplest and cheapest, or whether it's a more elaborate one, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, of course, the belt and the tape and negator spring type drive systems all have potential. They can be carried out. Uh, the the direct hard drive one that uh, I know would work for a photographic system would be the one which uh, I'm tagging with the name of sort of a, uh, well, it's a hybrid system, the hybrid fork system and a fluid sphere mount. Uh, basically, it just uses half the fork system, say the top half of the system. The part which would normally be immersed is, just, is eliminated altogether. And since we're not requiring any significant uh, loads to be carried by this thing, this would be like during a photographic uh, event when you may have a slight imbalance for some reason or other, or somebody touching it, or a momentary gust of wind, or a, or some kind of a shift or other. Now, if the arm were su sufficient uh, box structure, it'd be quite rigid torsionally. It should be uh, adequate to lock the. Uh, lock the system. Of course, at the at the polar axis end, it would be imparting the, the drive. Uh, uh, tracking errors at this point could be compensated for by um, varying the speed of the motor. Uh, up at the other end, the top end of the semi-fork, where the, uh, the shaft would attach to the sphere at right angles, uh, this could be a, a solid uh, attachment, and you could even uh, put slip rings or uh, flexible cables if you want to have instrumentation on the inside of the sphere. Well, in any event, uh, then you could, uh, well, especially if you had a code A focus system, you could even mount equipment right on the fork itself. But uh, such a system should provide uh, the hard precision necessary for tracking because still the, the supporting forces are carried by the sphere, which is, in, uh, is, which is floating. You'd be, you'd be working strictly as a, as a damping system, a damping and supporting system from the lower basin. This could be almost, itself could almost be sort of a, a rolling donut kind of a basin, which could uh, s tend to uh, center itself at the uh, normal center of the sphere. And the, uh, the fork would just provide the positioning control on the system. Uh, it should be uh, quite a simple system. And it should be much lighter and simpler than uh, conventional systems, and much more rigid. Uh, I think the uh, the characteristics of the damping system are, is, is is quite beneficial. Uh, I do want to attempt these systems also, as well as attempt the gyro system once I get the other basin in, in the in the works. Uh, the gyro is is waiting until. Uh, well, I have the other basin pretty well long. I've got to do the outside, outside shell, make an assembly, and then, of course, paint and seal it. And there should be a good uh, little handle, like a 65 pounds or so. Uh, and I, of 
course I have the gyro assembly all set together. Tell you what, I think I'll I want to stop this tape here for an instant and start it up and record the sound of the startup. Okay, I don't know how this thing is going to work, but you may get some radio noise or interference noise from the uh, gyro starting up. But I'm going to plug it in. This is the sound of telescopes in the future. These are three war surplus gyros, each weighing about 13 pounds. Three of them makes up uh, an assembly of about 40 pounds, which I have to, have, have to float. Still revving up. It'll go I'll keep revving now for several more minutes. Still winding up. I'm going to touch the microphone to the side of the cylinder. I don't know if this will make a noise or not. Probably will. Okay, that's it. I'm going to shut down now and play this back. That's shut off and slowing down now. Okay, uh, that's over. I've just uh, broken up the assembly outside and brought the scope inside, the drive and uh, everything else, and gave it sort of a look-see. Uh, so I've concluded all my testing for tonight. I did take a look at the uh, drive unit a little more closely, now with the sphere out of the way and in the light, and I was trying to get some conclusions on that backlash that I encountered. And uh, it looks like it very well may be that the uh, total elasticity is in the suction cup. There was a bit of backlash in the gearing, uh, but uh, that was a sort of a positive thing. I do have a small uh, uh, fluid pump that I did purchase out at CNH Sales. I might be able to incorporate that into pulling fluid directly out of the chamber from the uh, from the pump area, I mean from the, uh, the cup area. Another possibility would be to connect uh, the uh, the cup line uh, to a two-way valve, which I'll have the option of either valving it to uh, low pressure vacuum or valving it to ambient pressure uh, water, which uh, may be maybe the better way to go. I'm not sure it would involve much less uh, f physical uh, work to uh, to affect a, a lock. So rather than actually pumping action, you would uh, initially or, or random intervals pump out a, a basic reservoir or a tank, and then uh, just occasionally, as need be, uh, just uh, draw vacuum directly to the line. Uh, I'm going to.